its energy surrounds us and binds us. What's up, guys? Welcome back to episode 28 of the Carbonite Convos podcast. I'm joined today by my co-host, fresh on TikTok now. Uh, had to throw that throw that shout out out there. I know Alex is excited to get started with that. Alec, how we doing, man? Good, man. I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up, actually. I made my first one today, and yeah. I've got to say, it feels pretty good to get out there. The it, it was actually pretty fun. I was, I was interested to see how, how difficult it would be and if I would be interested in pursuing it, but dude, I actually had a great time making it and um, I'm excited to show off the Funko collection on it. So guys, if you want to go check that out, first videos up and there's going to be a ton coming out here soon. I have a really, really cool unboxing coming here in the next week or two, depending on how shipping works out, but stay tuned for that. Yeah, definitely. I know you were pretty excited just to find another outlet where you could, you know, talk about your pop, show off the collection um, other than Instagram. And I've been doing it for a couple months now. And, uh, you know, it's, it's so much fun, you know, just seeing um, how what the things you have, they can kind of bring you together with other people. Just, you know, that comment, really nice things. And, you know, you just strike up conversations about, you know, Star Wars and Marvel, like collectibles, you know, cool so stuff. um Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, before we get into uh, the heat of the show, let me just give you guys a quick rundown of what we got in store for you today. We are going to talk about the new uh, heavily rumored Ezra Bridger casting. Then we're going to go into talking about the Bad Batch, then Pre Vizsla and his relationship with Bo-Katan and what we might see in the future there. And then we're going to switch it over uh, to Marvel and we are going to talk about some Loki. There's a lot of interesting stuff coming up with his new with his new show premiering June 11th. And then the hottest item right now in the world. Alec, what am I talking about? We're talking about Wanda, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. WandaVision. We're going to talk a little bit about um, just how it's been up and, you know, through the first eight episodes, because Alec and I have not talked about this on the podcast at all. Obviously, we do reactions, but we haven't you know, been able to sit down, um, except for after the reactions and just kind of talk about that show and what our thoughts are. Um, and then moving into the final thing of the day, one of the things I know I am, and I know for a fact you are, Alec, thing we're most excited to talk about is uh, Spider-Man. We got a new name. So is, I, that, uh, even a, is that even a question? Is, duh, that's the most exciting thing. Yeah. I'm actually pretty <laughs> excited to talk about all this stuff today. Um, I know. Me too, and man. usually, usually Star Wars is my favorite to talk about, but um, you know, Marvel has a lot of stuff going on right now, and they're they're reeling me back in. Hey, everybody loves a little bit of Spidey, man. Exactly, exactly. Um, so what do you say? Let's you want to just get into this? Uh, Ezra Let's get it rolling. Bridger. All yeah, right, man. sounds good. So, Ezra Bridger, um, it, it's it's pretty much the strongest rumor we've had so far about his casting. Um, it's going to be Mina, and, and I. I, I hope I'm saying the name right. Mina Masoud. Masoud. Um, he played the live action Aladdin. Um, so he's he's very heavily rumored to be Ezra Bridger. What are what are your thoughts on that? Dude, to be completely honest, like I don't know much of his work outside of the Aladdin role, which end of the day, dude, I don't I really don't have a preference on who they cast as as Ezra. Um Obviously, the likeness has to be there um, for it to work. That just yeah. that goes without saying, which it's there. And makeup and hair and all that can do wonders. Yeah, I'm just the most excited for and the most in interested to see how he's portrayed. Because, Nick, um, I know we've had this conversation all the time. I'm not the biggest Ezra Bridger fan. No, nope. because <laughs> be and that's just because he's young. <laughs> like, to be completely honest, like Ahsoka wasn't. What's the She's best the character way. out there when she was a kid they're, they're literally children so he did look cool in rebels when they showed him in his older years mm -hmm. um so i'm excited to see if there's going to be some that same sort of character growth that ahsoka had going from child to adult if it's going to be the same for ezra and i'm sure it will be and so that's what makes me a little bit more excited to give him a second chance well, the biggest rumor going along with that, and I, I don't think this is confirmed, that you know Ezra Bridger is going to be in the Ahsoka show. So you're right along, you're like spot on when you say, you know, Ezra, you, you hope he takes this big leap like Ahsoka did, and I, I think we're going to see that, you know, because where we are with Ahsoka is, at, I yeah, it's after the Mandalorian season two, so she was just she just went through a very um, 
what's the word I'm looking for? A very different thing, something she has not been used to in a long time, running into a force wielder, uh, especially, you know, baby Yoda, Grogu, especially being that species. Um, so I think that could lead to a lot of different things throughout the Ahsoka show, clearly. But the biggest thing being Ezra Bridger and his his return, because it still has been a pretty significant amount of time since we've seen him. So there's definitely either going to be a lot of growth in, you know, the way we hope he goes. And there's a lot of growth, I'm sure, with him going off with Thrawn, that there's a more darker side to him. Absolutely. There's there's so much room for a story to be told, especially with him. Again, we can compare it to Ahsoka just because of how much detail their character is going to get and how big of a how big of an influence they had in their shows. With Ezra actually being even bigger than Ahsoka was in Clone Wars because he's essentially the main protagonist. Yeah, <clears throat> he has not had that moment yet of maturity that we've seen on camera or on in animation. He's had major events when he took out Thrawn. Uh, at the at the at the end of the show but he hasn't had that moment yet we we saw that was with, with ahsoka so when she ran into grogu she was already past that so we weren't expecting a super major event for her to happen but with ezra i'm personally expecting something huge to happen with him some uh, it could be a bad thing it could be a good thing i don't know it could be some sort say of founding in the force but when you say a huge thing happened to him do you mean the time in between we see him or when we see like Maybe but it could be it could be either one. In the show. Okay. It could be either one. We are going to find out a major event that has directly influenced the person that Ezra Bridger is at the time we see him. Yeah. So whether or not we actually see that on camera or not, I don't know. But there will be an event of some of some sort because they has to have character development. There has to, and he's most likely going to be with Grand Admiral Thrawn. So Ahsoka is seeking Thrawn very very heavily i feel like she's going level to level making sure she finds him like where's your boss where's your boss and she's finally reached that where is grand admiral thrawn you know she's reached that point so you're wondering what is causing her to search out for him if it's anything other than ezra bridger and if it is uh, maybe she knows something that he's behind with you know something involving the empire i can't imagine they would do that though, because of all things that would be on her mind, like the major events that are going on in her mind, he has to be at the top. Just because, like, the, we see that in the in the prologue um, of Rebels when she's like older and she finds him and yada yada, like that is a major journey for her, and I think that's probably going to take the you know majority of her effort. Yeah, no, 100%, 100%. So, you know, going back to the actor a little, I, I know you haven't seen a lot of his work, but, you know, with with you knowing that he played Aladdin, how would you feel about that type of uh, character, you know, playing Ezra Bridger? Because you can kind of compare the two. A lot of people have been calling it uh, like Space Aladdin, which is pretty funny. Yeah, a little bit. And what, now that you, met, now that you meant to mention that, actually, when – people who are successful in their roles, they're very good at playing that type of role again, mm -hmm. typically, typically. So like c compare RDJ, like he's always been that type of guy. That's always like a lovable, lovable jerk. Essentially. He's very good at playing that type of role. Like some people are really good at playing villains. If he can play the Aladdin and Ezra is the Aladdin of space, it should transfer very easy. Yeah, definitely. And I I'd like to point out because, you know, um, Shout out to a new channel I've been watching a lot, and that's The Den of Nerds. I know Josh is the host. I don't know his last name, but like uh, Josh has said some some pretty interesting things about, you know, this casting that have really gotten me got me thinking. Uh, so he said he, he liked he, he's kind of on edge about it because when you see Ezra going off with Thrawn, you kind of expect it to be a character who is a little darker than uh, again. I hope I'm saying his name right, Mina Masoud. Um, he played a very cheery, lovable guy in Aladdin. You know, he did some wrong things, but he was a very, it, it's Disney. It was a very bub happy. Bub bubbly. Exactly. And that's how Ezra was, um, you know, in Rebels until he started learning more and more about the, about the force. Uh, I think when he got his green saber, that's when you start seeing, well, and the holocron, the Sith holocron, that's when you see that, um, that decline into a little bit of darkness. And uh, Josh made a good point that maybe it should have been a character, 
a, a uh, actor that's played someone a little a little rougher or maybe rougher around the edges if that makes sense no a hundred percent but 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 just like anything else like you got to give them a chance disney yeah. will not make the wrong decision well it will see like that's what I, we I don't think, think so. but like a lot of people i mean yeah i i mean but it, it's always the wrong decision to someone you know so it's not who's right. to say they always you can't make everybody say, happy all the yeah. time who's but, to say it's right or wrong you know which whichever one they go with no that's a good point 100 yeah. percent. disney's gonna do i think they're gonna make the the cast that will properly tell the story and that's just my opinion so if, if he's the guy that they have their faith in i have my faith in him. oh yeah faith in no. him as well yeah i get that i get that so um you know switching from rebels and an uh well switching from one animated series to another. yeah i was gonna say ezra and rebels to uh the bad batch you want to get into a little a little talk about post order 66 dude i am so happy that they're releasing that may 4th um yes exact exactly one year since season seven dude i am so excited i at the same time i know that's gonna be a tearjerker dude like the the teaser that they showed of executing order 66 that's gonna be in there and obviously that's gonna go a lot more in depth i'm not looking forward to that part of it however i'm also excited for it at the same time well, that kind of goes back to season seven of, of Clone Wars because we knew it was going to be sad going in. If we were seeing what we hadn't seen in Revenge of the Sith, everybody knows how that ends. Mm-hmm. We knew it was going to be sad, but we were still very interested and very moved seeing it through Ahsoka's eyes. Right. And again, it's it's probably the reason why it, it did so well is just anything that's like such a major event – you want to see other people's perspectives. So like we love seeing it through the eyes of Ahsoka. It'll be interesting to really see how the clones behaved during the order. Like, I feel like it's going to put it into almost a more of a realistic effect. Yes. We saw it happen live action in revenge of the Sith. We saw people die and all that, but we really didn't see the, like the after effects, the right before, as it was happening, we didn't get like the, emotional standpoint from the clones per se maybe a little bit but nothing nothing crazy or nothing that we want to see um i think this is their opportunity to do that oh definitely and you're talking about a group of clones that is different than anything we've ever seen they're not the same type of clones that are as programmed at least they don't seem to be they you know they're the bad batch for a reason so you know you uh, Pretty much, I think the premise is their inhibitor chips did not go off, but it's just, you know, interesting for them on, in that aspect because, you know, they, the clone army have their brothers and they have their, you know, little squad. They, they don't really deviate out too much outside of that. Um, but I think it's going to be really cool to see them in action and see how the other clones have now turned. Absolutely. It's, it's, it, it can't come at any better time. I've really been dying to, watch rebels again lately however i have a lot of other shows and such on my plate that i need to knock off first so when this comes out it's going to kind of satisfy that hunger of the animated style clone war style that type of thing um it'll you know brings back the little kid a little bit it does 100 percent. and we say it a hundred times dude in, in these kids shows dude they're so well made such quality and so emotionally in depth they're there's a bigger audience they're trying to reach. Definitely. Definitely. Um, you know, with the bad batch going along with clone wars, uh, you know, the man, specifically the Mandalorians, let's talk about a little bit um, of Katie Sackoff's comments about who she wants to see. You know, we mentioned it at the beginning of the show. What do you, what do you think of her comments talking about seeing pre Vizsla? Dude, to be completely honest, I would I would absolutely love a live pull action up a quote. Go for it. I'm I would absolutely love a live action pre Vizsla. However, this is just my opinion. I would love to see something a little bit more styled towards. Remember the scene in Rebels where they explain the history of the dark saber? Yeah. Something in that type of animation, like a 
like a short movie, like maybe like an hour, hour and a half type of thing where it's a introduction to his life or something along those lines. Pre Vizas? Yes. Okay. You know how it's like that. It looks like cave type cave painting type. Um, I don't know if you're, have you, there's the legend of Korra. It's, it's a sequel to Avatar, it. the last airbender. If anyone's familiar with that, they, they, they go back and show the very first avatar and it's like a different art style than the rest of the show. It's almost like a watercolor painting combined with the regular animation. If they could maybe do something like that, I know I would personally be very happy because it would kind of tie that into Rebels and the and the Dark Saber a little bit more. However, I would not complain about live action whatsoever. Yeah, because when you think about pre Vizsla live action, you have to see, you have to think about where Bo Katan is right now, where the where Star Wars is kind of heading and see where he can fit into that. Because if she means she wants to see live action pre Vizsla in general, there's a lot you can do with that. But if she's saying she wants to see him live action with her, you know, herself, Mm -hmm. that becomes a little, a little more difficult because it's been a pretty significant amount of time since uh, pre Vizsla was killed and uh, the man, her appearance in the Mandalorian. Right. The only thing I could potentially think about how they would be able to do that is some sort of force ghost type entity, maybe a Jedi temple they run into or, or something. Maybe they go to Mandalore and get some holy ground or something, but that is the only explainable way they could do that. Well, I kind of think of it as. Unless it's a flashback. Yeah, I, I, I get that. But let's say they were to make a series, like, like right. maybe a four episode regular, like 30 minute episode series about these two it'd be kind of i feel like it'd be a little underwhelming because what are they going to show us you know she didn't end the the show with him he died not not too early but not too late um so i don't really know what they could show that would get us you know very excited to watch to watch it how we get for wandavision and the mandalorian if that makes sense I'm sure if it came out, I'd like it. hundred percent. Like we, we, we would be watching it the moment it came out. Yeah, exactly. But, but no, I hundred percent agree with what you're saying. So let me read this quote. She was, she was saying, I think I would love to see some stuff with pre Vizsla. That was such a fun storyline for Bo. And it was such a fun glimpse into for fans who haven't seen Clone Wars and Rebels. Bo Katan didn't start out necessarily on the right side of things. She thought she was, so I would recommend people go back and watch Clone Wars because I think you can understand what I'm talking about. And that is that time with Vizsla, which I think is important to who she is as a person and the growth that she's gone through. I would love to see that. I really like how invested in the character she is. Yeah, she loves it. She loves it. She tweets about she. It's really interesting. It's really cool to see. Well, as a a fan, like. Person like so like let's go let's go back to Mandalorian for just a second and compare compare that to um Bill Burr's performance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously he doesn't love Star Wars and he still killed the he still killed the role. That was a phenomenal episode. But with her, she literally loves the character. So it makes you want to invest more in the character, knowing that the actress that is portraying her is literally like Oh, I want to see her do really, really cool things. Yeah, you know, no, you know what I'm getting at? I 100 percent get that because you know I love Han Solo, but it's kind of disheartening knowing how how much he can't stand how it. seemingly annoyed he is with it, and and that right. kind of you know that kind of sucks. Um, you, you know he he doesn't disrespect it. He, you know, he has a lot of uh, Harrison Ford has a lot of respect for Star Wars clearly, but you can you can tell that he's had enough over the years. You know. Right. And to be honest, like, you can blame him. Yeah. 100%. Like, he's how long, how long has it been since he portrayed it? And people are still probably bugging him every single day. I could see how how that gets annoying. Uh, But, you know, with her, when I feel like if someone walked up to her and was like, hey, what do you think about Bo's backstory? Blah. And she might, she might genuinely be like, oh, I love it. Like, and have some sort of, you know, good feedback for you, you know? Yeah. No, definitely. Definitely. Um, it, it, she does make a good point. It would be interesting to see how much she grows um, and changes at, as her time goes along with Vizsla. You know, it, clearly this would, I assume it would be during the Clone Wars uh, seasons. 
Right. Which if they did a series about them, that could open more doors to, you know, throwing in some more prequel characters, who knows, making, making, well, I was going to say a switch to live action, but pretty much a lot of people who were in Clone Wars were in the movies clearly. Um, Right. (laughs) But, you know, I think they, I think they could do a lot in that series, but I still, you know, would be a little skeptical about it. I don't know. I don't know. Is there anything else uh, Star Wars you can think of? No, nothing, nothing, nothing outrageous or anything new. Just excited for the new shows coming up. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. It's, it's been cool because, you know, as I've been focusing a little more on TikTok, I've just been watching the movies again, watching these Easter eggs. And it's just really interesting seeing all these little hidden details throughout Star Wars, throughout Marvel that were right in front of us. Um, it's been so, so much fun doing that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. For sure. Um, so let's get into Loki. What do you think? 611. 611. I, God, I'm, I'm actually, I'm interested to see if the character itself will be any different. And by that, I mean, like the choices that he makes, the, 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 the attitude he has with things, is it going to be like how exactly how villainous is he going to be? Obviously this is right after the battle of New York. So he's still, he's still on the shady side. However, the, the good in him is st- has kind of always still been there. So I wonder if there's going to be some other events in this show that, that put him on the right track, kind of how his situations with Thor put him on the right track. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think for, for the more casual fans, I feel like a lot of people are expecting the Loki that has experienced everything that we've seen him experience with, um, you know, Thor, the dark world going into event and then going into Ragnarok and eventually into Avenger infinity war. So there's a lot that happened to Loki that we've seen that I don't anticipate those affecting who he is in the show we're getting, you know what I mean? Because we're not getting that Loki. Like you said, I think I agree that the light has always been there. Uh, you know, if we're comparing this to star, hear Wars, that a lot. Yeah, the light has always been there for him, but you know we're still getting a very rough Loki. He just almost, he's still mad. He's still mad at the world. Yeah, like, but the thing is, he still is wants like, vengeance. Yeah, but you also realize like he didn't lose that. Let me try to back up a little bit. So Loki had time after the Battle of New York to stir on it, to stir on that loss. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Pretty much Loki loses. He got, put, he got put in check. Yes, but 10 minutes later, he escaped. So he thought he was done in those moments. He's binded. He's going off with the, the freaking Avengers. He's pretty – I don't think freaking he's too – Avengers. I don't think he's too optimistic about his odds. But then you go to Endgame, you see this w- literally one in a billion actions where the Tesseract slides over to him and he disappears. So bringing it back – he doesn't re- he hasn't tasted the loss too too much you know what i mean 100% i'm ta- right there with you he's only had 10 minutes and he he made it out free no he's 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 going to make bad decisions yeah however they're for the content and for pe- for the people that love loki i feel like they have to give those fans what they love about the character like his mis- mischief right yeah. His mischief, but you also like him. He's also, he'll help you out a little bit, but then he might stab you in the back and then he exactly. might unstab you in the back. And I don't know. You wonder, it, it kind of gets me thinking because what we see in the 2012 Avengers is that they're introducing Thanos in the post credit scene, but also Thanos sends Loki to Earth. And if he fails, they said there isn't a crevice. We can't find you. Thanos didn't say that. It was, um, I, I don't. Was it I don't Ebony, know. Ebony? Was it Ebony yeah. Maw? No, 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 no. Uh, remember, because he died it, in Avengers, the original Avengers. He he killed him uh, soon after. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The dude died soon after, but he was like, "There's no crevice. We can't find you." Mm-hmm. Um, so you wonder how those two Thanos and that, and that guy might play into the Loki series, if at all, you know what I mean? Because they still have a lot of business with Loki. 
hundred percent. They could easily throw Thanos in there, but I really hope they don't. I don't want to see any more Thanos. At least either. not right now. I don't think I don't think they will. No. It's they're just started this new phase. I don't think that's gonna be the direction no. they're gonna take. How would you feel about them in the future? Um how many years would it take for you to uh like be you know pretty interested to see Thanos in a Marvel outlet? I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't I'd be interested no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> However, I just don't – I don't want to see him again, man. No. Unless it's some some sort of, like, small event, like, in the background. You see, like, worlds in chaos or something like that. There's yeah. Like, you just know, hey, Thanos happens to be right there at this point yeah. in time. No, I, I agree. But, I, nah, I'm, no, I'm good. I'm good. Part of what did it for me is, you know, we, we collect. That's pretty much more of a hobby than podcasting. You know, we've just found a way to bring this into podcasting. Um, but I think what did that, the reason I bring that up is because they made so many Thanos pops that I just started to get sick of him. I know there are, up, there are upwards of like 20, 25 Thanos pops. hundred percent. And dude, to be pretty honest with everybody, at one point I probably had like twelve, whether it be uh, the Chrome Infinity ones, the two ten inchers. I had a lot, but over you know the past the year only, or so, the only gotten... one I still own is Thor and Stormbreaker right here. You can see. Really, you didn't keep the common Thanos. Mm-mm. Really, huh? I just I just don't need Let them, me... and I don't I don't need the multiple man. No, I got I hear you. I kept. Uh, well, you guys can't see it. Thanos and his ship. And he's with everybody who was in the quantum quantum realm. Mm-hmm. I have the metallic Thanos from Infinity War down there. I have and I have the glow in the dark um, Thanos from Guardians of the Galaxy. So I wanted one of him in each of his each of his phases. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. and, I don't in think... each respective category, exactly. Oh, and then obviously I have the two scenes with Thanos and Cap and Thanos and Thor as well. Right, but. Yeah, it used to be a lot worse, but that's kind of what made me sick of him. They were just, there was so much saturation. And there was collector core, and then there was the Dude. classic ones, and there was the yep. little ones, and the the big one. They saturated the market with Thanos merchandise, and it was it, at some point I was like, "Yeah, great character, no disrespect whatsoever. Like he's awesome." But I was like, "Okay, I, I'm a, I'm done with seeing. I'm done seeing him for a little bit." Let's move on from this this villain. You know, like you Absolutely. said though, I think it'd be really cool to see it from that other angle. Um, you know, a lot of like a lot like Clone Wars season seven. You know, seeing a big event from a you know a different angle and where they're going in the future. There are plenty of people that who that have now lived through post post End Game. So they, I'm sure everybody is dealing with it their own ways. Now that you say that, actually, I actually would not mind seeing a little bit of the planning of the Battle of Endgame. So, like, ma- so, like, you like know what I'm Doc- saying? Like, go ahead. Yeah. No, 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 no. You go. You go. No, like Loki returning to him, giving him back that stone. Like, how exactly he tracked down and found out each location of the stone. Like, oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. I would not want to see that. Really? I was thinking more of like. Cause you said end game. That's, that's a lot like, uh, like infinity war. What you were describing was like a, like a closer look at infinity war. Is that what you meant? Cause I thought you meant end game. Oh, either one. Really? I wouldn't want to see anything really with infinity war, but I feel because there, not a lot of those characters are still, well, not a lot of the main ones, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I was thinking post the snap, post the blip. Because there are still oh, people. like when he goes and farmed and stuff. No, I'm stepping away from Thanos for a little. Oh, bit. okay, okay, no, no, okay. No. I'm saying, picture Ant Man. Ant Man was in the quantum realm. He's gonna have another movie. Endgame has happened for him. He lived through going back in time, and these other people being snapped back to life. Half the universe coming back. I'm sure he has his own healing to do. That's a Oh, it's very traumatic. Not, yeah, that's an experience for him too. So I feel like there's something we could see maybe from him or um, I almost said Juan is him or Wasp's vision, um, him or Wasp perspective uh, going back in time a little. Like maybe they have a flashback of the fight or something. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know. I think there's a lot of room for little scenes like that because we're all they all have experienced that. It'll it'll undoubtedly get talked about in some capacity. Like it could be a sentence like, "Yeah, back when we had the fight, Thanos, I hurt my back, and it's been bugging me ever since." Like. You know what I'm saying? Jeez. I don't know. Yeah, it's a no, ter- terror, absolutely horrendous example, but it works. No, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it'd definitely be be really interesting to, you know, see how this affects everything moving forward. Because I feel like WandaVision has been, and I Loki as well, have will be those outcasts. Because they don't really talk about Endgame too, too much in WandaVision. But it's, with the whole sitcom vibe, it was... N- It's not like if they did a movie right now about Doctor Strange or Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Because she's dealing with her own mind-bending reality thing. And Mm -hmm. that's not always what Marvel's um, gone for. It's been, you know, more realistic. I'm talking about aliens being realistic. Well, well, I don't know. They're realistic. But the type of superhero, all that stuff being realistic. um, WandaVision's definitely very different. So it's going to be interesting to see those characters. You know, Ant-Man, he can just get really tall and get really small. He can't, you know, change reality. Same with many other Avengers. So how are they dealing with it that, you know, didn't go through exactly what Wanda did? Right. Yeah. No, I'm right there with you. I'd love to see that. Definitely. Definitely. Um, So you want to talk about WandaVision a little more? Yeah. Yeah. So I think the big take right now is – Obviously, this week would be the finale. Yeah. I don't see it being the finale, man, to be honest. Really? I've seen a lot of things, like, and this is all from TikTok. So, again, shout out to the creators on TikTok that have quality con- content where we take away some really good things. They made some really good points about why there should be 10 episodes. And I could be explaining this wrong, but in remember the the t- 2000s episode where they did, like, the Office um, the office intro. Yeah. Um, well, it, technically it w- actually wasn't based off of the office. It was based off of a show that the Russo brothers worked on in the two thousands, but it's very similar. I cannot recall the name of it right now, uh, but Dude, I'll look it up later. I don't agree with that. I don't agree. hundred percent. I'll hundred percent. However, I have something in, to tell in, you as well in that thing where they were switching through, it was said Wanda, 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 there was a yeah. calendar and the tenth was circled on there in like a cert, like a w- w- weird way, mm-hmm. and I just don't see this big battle happening or anything happening in a f- even an hour episode that we have left. Like, there's so much. I know we're not going to get the answer to everything because that's just not how it works. However, there's so many things that they're not going to leave that many things unanswered. I don't, and and, and that's just my opinion. I don't know. All right. Well, first I'm going to talk about the office episode and then I'm going to talk about why I think that this is the finale we're getting. Maybe the theme song wasn't based on the office. It seemed awfully similar. Well, the the song, the song was, I I agree. But even parts of the episode, even parts of those, because somebody, again, somebody on TikTok put Jim right next to vision and Vision was making the same exact motions that Jim was. So it was also tailored after The Office. Part, 100%. Well. well, all of the episodes have been a combination of different things. But I'm talking yeah. about the, the the intro itself where it said Wanda, Wanda, Wanda. Yeah. Again, I can't remember the name of the show, but the, the Russo brothers worked on it in the 2000s. And the intro of that show, it was the word hello in a hundred in the clouds on a tree on a piece of notebook paper in a calendar like that type yeah. of same exact thing as I didn't want the song. I agree was very similar to the office visions, mannerisms, the office a hundred percent, but I was just talking about the intro itself. Okay. I gotcha. I gotcha. Now I'm going to, all right, w- moving forward into this being the finale. I, hundred percent think this is going to be the finale because one, if you look at the schedule, everything lines up too perfectly because WandaVision will end this week, next week, the show, um, the making of WandaVision, the first, you know, installment of Avengers. Assemb- I, I think it's Marvel's assembled. Is mm-hmm. it? Yeah. So Marvel's assembled would come out that week. And then the following week, it would be Falcon, 
Winter Soldier. So I think it just flows too perfectly for there to be an extra episode because that would kind of invalidate moving forward. You, you know, moving forward, that would kind of invalidate like, oh yeah, there's officially nine episodes. Everybody would start thinking, oh, well, maybe if they added, what if they add an extra one again? You know, maybe I feel like right. that's a dangerous precedent to set. Sure. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. I, we will find out on Thursday. Yeah. And um, dude, I hope you're right. I hope you're right. I hope so. I hope I I'm hope right so. too. I just I don't mean, see it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, again, we have so much that needs to be answered and it, it's going to be at max. It's going to be like 50 minutes. I wouldn't say max. Uh, I don't think cl- I, there's no way it. it's going to be longer close, than that. Close to it. Like I, I, there's no way it's going to be more than an hour. No way. No, no, no physical way. And for an hour with everything going on, dude, I, I just don't, I, I just feel like they got to give us more right now. Cause we're not, we're not going to see any of those for a couple, for a good minute. And I, I don't know. I, I just don't see it happening. Hmm. I got you. So what do you kind of see? What are your predictions maybe for this episode? And then how that might leave it open for another episode? I think that, um, I think that James Spader's voice is going to be this new vision. Really? Has to be like, if he's in the cast, like I don't think there's enough time for it to be Hayward. And it, it, we know it's in there in some way, shape, or form. It's yeah. either vision or a flashback at this point. Wait, what's and either it, a vision or a flashback? His, his voice. And if okay. it was go- and if it was gonna be a flashback, it would have happened last week. Okay. Yeah, I get that. I get that. So I think that this vision is gonna be his voice. If it's Hayward, it's sweet. But I think it's gonna be him, and I think he's gonna be that type of. I mean, I don't know what exactly he's going to do, but that's my main prediction for it. The only thing that I have a problem with about that is, you know, they kind of played with our feelings with this whole Quicksilver, Evan Peters, and I think it very well still could be leading towards an X-Men path. I do. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't, that's a big way to play with our feelings. But I feel like if, you know, this anti-vision or spectral vision, whatever he is, when if they make Spader play his voice, people will think, and they don't intend for it to involve Ultron at all. Mm. That would, I feel like that, that'd Just be toying, toying with exactly, us a little bit. exactly. And I don't think I think they know the line. And if that has nothing to do with Ultron moving forward, then I don't see him playing the voice of of this new Vision. We, I just, he has to be in there somehow. He has, he's in the cast for, yeah, but still, like that. I mean, maybe they did that to throw us off. Yeah, like, they could. They that's could. something a lot smaller than putting his voice as this new seemingly mm-hmm. villain, you know? Yeah, maybe. Well, I mean, literally, we'll find out here in a couple of days. So, but I hope, think- I hope we get more. I really hope we get more Ultron for sure. So, do you think Hayward's just a douche then, or do you think he is something far worse? I can't answer that. I don't know. Yeah. If maybe he is reminiscence of another villainous superpower, but what if he's know. a scroll? Honestly, very likely. I don't yeah. know. Well, Dude, we, the scrolls have... could have they could have been there all along. There's no all t- along. I, I want. I wonder if there's any way that any of the people inside of Westview are scrolls. Jeez, that's really going into it. I don't I know. Don't. Would she be able to, uh, you know, mind control them? I don't see why not. Yeah, if you're if they're inside of it, huh? That's interesting. Like how we go from you know a possible one to we we just go down the rabbit hole with scrolls. We could go much. Iron from- Man is coming back. And him and Captain America are gonna walk in. And, no, I'm just kidding. Absolutely, you know, like you know that would never happen. Like, but like we're saying this cap. Or no, like we're just saying Iron Man? we're just throwing ridiculous things uh, out there. That like, yeah. What if the Fantastic Four come and then That's Ghost Man Rider comes up and then all of a sudden Spider Man comes? Like, yeah. See, I I feel like the, it, it's too it's too close to Endgame that had everybody to throw in a crap ton of people again, you know? So I don't think we're going to see too many uh, new characters, but 
let's hear some of your thoughts of who you think this this uh, cameo might be. Dude, I don't. If it's anyone, it's got to be Doctor Strange. But do you think that Doctor Strange character? It, let's get one thing straight. Elizabeth Olsen never said that there would be a Luke Skywalker type cameo. She did not say those words. She was simply asked when talking about, you know, Star Wars, WandaVision, they said, is there anything, you know, like that Luke Skywalker level cameo in WandaVision? Um, and she said, she said, yes, but she, I don't think she was deliberately saying that there will be this gigantic when you think with, of what with Luke the, Skywalker with, was with the for, MCU, there's no comparison right now. Like yeah, if, it, that, if there was a Luke Skywalker of the MCU, it would be Captain America or Iron Man, and but that's not going to happen. It's like, too close right now. But exactly, you can you can also make an argument. And we'll get into this in a second. And I think you'll love it. But take it back to Luke really quick. There is Star Wars needed another Luke Skywalker appearance. In you know they needed another version of luke skywalker one that you know more people um agree with because there are, are a lot of people out there that do not like luke from the sequels so it had been a couple years it had been several years since we saw luke in his prime and i mm -hmm. think that after seeing it i think that was needed i think that was needed you know it was time for this original character to come to come back in Marvel terms, and you'll again, you'll like this. I think the only comparable one, and this is not me saying that I think it's going to happen because I don't, it'd be awesome. I think the only one that could compare to that would be if Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man popped up in this episode, because that is the level of, you know, it's been 20 years or so, uh, 15 years, however long it is. It's been a very long time. You never know, knew if, you know, he was going to be played again um, after, you know, his last performance. So I feel like seeing that, that will awaken the kid, especially, you know, Luke Skywalker did it for a lot of ages, but I feel like that one will sit with our generation very heavy. 100% obviously huge character in our lives. However, I could see that. I feel like that's believable that it could happen, but also not at the same time because they'd, they'd need one, two episodes. Well, that they would need two episodes, <laughs> maybe but, four. So the Fiatro thing for them to bring the Andrew to bring the Tobey Maguire into WandaVision it would make sense after they did the the Fiatro thing. However, Wanda and Peter do not have a close enough relationship for him for a Peter Parker to show up. No, it makes sense I, for Pietro because it was her brother and it was the fake one. So like, if there was a fake Peter Parker, a, a feeder Parker. <laughs> then Jeez. no i didn't <laughs> mean that he, he wouldn't be the only one if he came up I'm, i should have prefaced this i don't think it would be agatha or uh wanda bringing bringing him in i think that dr strange is going to make his very mm. i i think that's going to happen i i am 95 percent sure that we're going to see dr strange and that's not coming off like hey you can confirm it here I, it's nothing like that it's that I, I'm going with my gut that we're going to see Dr. Strange. So I don't think he's this big cameo. I think it would, if it were, if it were, you know, Luke Skywalker level, it would be him bringing Toby Maguire's in. Yeah. It's not going to happen. I know that. I, I It's not going to happen. Just saying, that would There's be, no that would be sick. I, I don't think we're even, even when it does happen, I don't see us getting any more than like two or three minutes of them. Of who? Of 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 these other Spider Men really? until yeah. until later down the years. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I, that's not gonna. That's uh, we're talking. We're talking light years away from from that right now. You think? Well, I mean, when we see him, we're either gonna see him in Doctor Strange or Spider Man Three. That's I feel like realistically, yeah. that's what we're gonna happen. And when we do see him, him and Andrew Garfield, if we get both of them, it's only gonna be for a couple minutes right now. It's not going to be – because if they do it all together two months, there's going to be no more development for Tom Holland's character in Spider-Man in Spider 3. So I don't see that happening until it's a post-credit, maybe the, like at the very end of the movie. Really? Yeah, dude. I don't know. I wow. just don't see I... – I, I don't see them teaming up together right now. Yeah. No, the, I get that. The threat that, the threat that Peter Parker is going to be facing in Spider-Man 3, in my opinion, is not going to be big enough for all three of them to be together. 
That's but, the, what, and it's going to happen down the road. But who knows what's happening with Wanda? Who knows how that plays into Spider-Man 3? Because if she, if we're bringing witches into the case now, moving forward with Doctor Strange, one of the darkest you know, storylines out there, I could see a lot of avenues where that type of event might happen in Spider-Man three. I don't think it's going to be this end game civil, you know, civil war. That's more comparable type deal where there's like 10 of them, but I, I definitely see something big enough happening to where they might need to call in people who can help. Yes. Yes. I agree. However, like as much as I want that to happen, I, you know, like I would love a whole movie of all three of them teaming up and kicking butt the whole time. But for, again, this is my personal opinion for Tom Holland's character to develop more. He needs more alone time on screen. Yeah. Far, far mm -hmm. from home was a, was a step in the right direction. He got stronger and he got more Spider-Man ish, but he needs more time. That's why I just don't want that to happen quite yet. At some point he has to, and maybe it's not time yet, but at some point he can't be the little superhero anymore he has to it's, at some point he's not the little boy anymore that needs a mentor right. but right. The, the problem with that is at the level the mcu is right now with witches and you know in uh, infinity type infinity stone type powers coming back again where does spider-man alone fit into that you know mm -hmm. what i mean and, and you you I don't know. I could be, I could be wrong in a lot of ways, but he, as he grows older, a, a lot of stuff in the MCU, it's going to keep getting more extraterrestrial, even mm -hmm. farther than we've seen. So it, that's hard to make, you know, Spider-Man, the next Iron Man, it, it, right. just, it just can't be done. So it's going to be interesting to see how he kind of shies away from the spotlight because maybe he's not involved with all these bigger things going on in the universe. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Dude, you know, one thing I'm actually really excited about, and it's, it's more funny than anything else is when the three of them do get together. Will Andrew Garfield and Tobey and Tom Holland freak out at Tobey Maguire's organic webs? Because it, yeah, they, they, all, they use, both. they use yeah. web shooters. Every other Spider-Man ever uses web shooters except Tobey Maguire. Yeah. It just comes out of his skin. Are they going to be disgusted? Like, what kind of witty comment is Tom Holland going to have? Like, I'm pumped to see that. Damn, I'm that's, gonna... that's cool. Yeah. I know. Like, so I actually saw, I saw someone talking about it on TikTok earlier and I was like, dude, that's phenomenal. Like that's, I, I think that's going to be hilarious. Yeah, um, definitely. I think any way they bring them in, it's going to be funny. It, oh, it, I will well, be, I will be happy with it yeah. no matter what. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's going to be an exciting day. And then you get the villains. You you just you wonder how what direction are they going with this? How are they pulling all of these characters in, you know, with mm -hmm. it being Green Goblin, Electro, so Doc, Doc Ock. So while we're talking about goblins, um, here's a here's a not a prediction, but a, a fan theory that's very realistic is that Ned is going to become Hobgoblin. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard if that. You, if we, if in that in the new comics, in the in the new yes, that happens. His friend becomes the Hobgoblin. Mm hmm. Really. So, if you in the new teaser where we were introduced to the the new name No Way Home, let me stop it really quick, just so everybody, uh, just a reminder. Alec knows Spider Man clearly way better than I do. He, you know, he's wall crawler pop. So, um, fresh he, on TikTok. Exactly. He is, uh, you know, he's learning me right now. Let's hear it. In this teaser, dude, he lost a lot of weight. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's awesome for him. He looks really good. And now we're talking about witches and mind control and all these sort of things. I can see that happening very easily. Is Hobgoblin type of, that type of like witch character? No, but like with the MCU's different. Ned's a different character than we've ever seen. So like if if this is the new like a new version of Hobgoblin, it's got to be a new origin. Just like example, like the ultimate version of Green Goblin was like a different um, experiment gone wrong. Like he got huge. He has a different look. If Ned becomes Hobgoblin, I think it's going to be a different backstory, a different origin story, and a different look at the character. 
Okay. Gotcha. Now, <laughs> this is a little off topic. Going off of these three Spider-Man, Spider-Man, um, Spider-Man, I think we're missing spider uh, we're, Yeah, spider, spider dudes. I think we're missing, uh, you know, one key one. What about the Spider-Man from the video game? How would that play in, if at all? I mean, we never know. If, if, if the Spider-Verse movie has a role in this in some way, shape, or form, why can't the video game be in there? Exactly. I feel like with him, he'd have to have his mask on because they've changed his likeness to be look a little bit more like Tom Holland. So they'd have to well, have the, the re- they didn't on. they didn't make it to look like Tom Holland. It it just looks strikingly more similar it, to him. It it's it's made to look like Yuri, the police officer, the Asian woman in, in the video game, because on the PS5 for her, the faces to operate at the level they wanted it to operate. Hers was like the perfect face to do it. And the guy in the previous look for Peter Parker, it didn't quite work how they wanted it to. It wasn't as smooth as they would have liked it. So they had to change it to her likeness a little bit. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Like that, that was their official statement. That was Sony's official That's statement. That's really interesting. Yeah. So I, I'd be curious if they were to do a live action which which look would they go for? Um, I don't I don't know. Maybe they just keep him in mask the whole time. While while we're talking about Spider Verse, actually, little yeah, let's, let's again in this there's a an, again fan theory Easter egg type thing that this could be a lot, but in in the in the teaser when they show the No Way Home on the board, it does that like flash thing. It goes from yeah. the board to like the actual title of the movie. It does like the flash. Dude, that's yes. very Spider Verse, like the little glitch that they do. The glitch, hundred uh, percent, especially. Yeah, at the beginning, yeah, very, very much so. And the noise it makes, and like the similarities, and the, the quick transition in the light. Yeah, I'm just telling you, and I, I, I've said it a million times on here that Into the Spider Verse Miles is my favorite Spider Man. If that happens, you will see me lose my mind. <laughs> That's and awesome. You heard it. You heard it right here. Right, It'd be a hot mess that day. So for sure, for sure. I remember we saw Into the Spider Verse for the first time together out in arizona i I was visiting and we were able to see that and oh man the seats reclined that we didn't order any dinner but like they uh um it was you me and abby we just that was an incredible movie i like it when the movie theaters have those little displays out and you can take pictures with them because i remember getting a picture of that thing yeah for sure and then you know that movie think of how far it's come now to where we're talking about it involved with one of our favorite franchises ever it, it, well, right in the middle of the MCU, dude. To be honest, like that movie re sparked my love of animation, just because really? like it was different. It was different. The thing like I've always I've always liked the art style and that sort of things, but like we saw this, we were like we had probably we were like twenty twenty one somewhere in there, yeah. And we're like, oh, it's kind of lame. It's a cartoon, yada yada. And to be honest, that's before I had seen Clone Wars. Um, yeah. and rebels and all those sort of things. I never so, wrote it off, really. I did. I didn't write it off, but I'm like, I don't want to see that. It's animated, whatever. And I'm like, you know what? It's Spider Man. I'm sure I'll like it. Let me go watch it. And it became my favorite movie of all time. And that instantly sparked my want f- to watch these animated shows because of the quality of the show. Never write it off because it's animated. Because some of the best shows and some of my favorite shows are all animated. A lot of people's favorite shows now are animated. So there's no reason to write those off. And I, it was interesting that Spider, Spider-Man spider taught me that lesson. Yeah, oh boy. Oh boy, how, how heartwarming. How heartwarming. Um, Spidey's got my back, man. What do you think, like, what do you think that Miles Morales will look like? Um, not 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 f- physically, I'm not saying like that. Like, what will that character be? What will his role be in the MCU? Um. Well, to be honest, I would see it as... Kind of how it is in the video game, um, where Miles is young, Peter's a little bit older, and especially if we're bringing these other other Peter Parkers in, um, I feel like Andrew Garfield will be about the right age uh, to mentor or uh, Miles Morales. Uh, so probably something along those lines, maybe um, mm. that type of role. And this is also a stretch, but supposedly the the outline of the web on, on that whiteboard in the teaser where yeah. it says spider-man no way home whatever the outline of that webbing very strikingly resembles the shape of puerto rico yeah 
which is you know which is miles morales's descent absolutely let me ask you this so if we're getting or if we're led to believe that we're getting a miles morales in spider-man 3 doctor strange what whatever um you know multiverse movie we might be seeing do you think there's a possibility that we are just getting the one miles from uh, into the spider verse or do you think we'll be getting uh you know the do you think game? we'll be getting the new the video game or a new mcu miles um because I, remember I, we I, have, I don't th- we already thing- have a mention of or, or a heavy mention of a miles morales in this universe you know it could be written off now um with the plans moving forward but in spider-man homecoming the childish gambino his character while he's webbed to the tap to his car he says mm-hmm. he has so I, got a, a, I got a nephew he's got a nephew you know a lot of people took that for saying it just kind of i, I don't th- i don't think the spider-man miles morales exists currently in the mcu so you don't think he i don't i don't think person? the miles Mor- I, no he's a, he's alive but i don't think he is spider-man nor will he ever be if really? they're going to bring Miles Morales in, it's going to be from a different universe because my, the, that Spider-Man does, was not originated from our universe. The universe that we exist in, that in the comics, he was not a thing. He oh, came really? From, he came from, he was born. Or like Earth 616? Yeah, he was not a thing. He was brought to Earth 616 later, hmm. but he originated in the Ultimate Universe. Okay. That's, that's why. That's why he's called the Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's the the really cool. Universe. And I think they're just, again, if they're toying with us, they know exactly how to do it, but <laughs> there were a good few hints as to, you know, that pointed to miles. And in these things, in these teasers, dude, they don't make those mistakes. Like there's no, no. majority of the time. There's not like, Oh, it might be one little thing that might be a stretch, but when there's multiple things leading to something like, it raises it raises the question like dude that might that might be legit like do you ever think that these the the people who create these teasers in the movies do you think they say let's throw in the let's try to think of the smallest possible thing we could throw in as a hint because you know i'm sure they put a lot of things in it you know like the outline of puerto rico like that glitch they put those in there's got to be a skill as to how they know there's a hundred know it hundred percent so you think of they literally what? just dude they literally just did that with i know the, but with the teaser for the name where it was like zendaya tweeted something and tom holland tweeted the name whatever yes but that's exactly what that is no but what i'm what i'm thinking of is you think of these high ups you know sitting in an office planning this teaser i wonder if there's something that is om- uh, that is near impossible to notice but they throw so many things in there just to see how much they can get away with. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm, dude! I, if you look at the if you look at the whiteboard, they had they had to have had fun with that. Like there's things yes. crossed, like like homeschooled, home homeschooled. Run. Aunt, Aunt May said no. Home a home run, sports ball, like like these little this little funny anecdotes that are like oh, it, like far from home was on there. It was crossed off. It's like oh, we already did this one. Like they had fun <laughs> with it. Yeah, no, that is cool. It, it, and it, it's been the whole vibe of Spider-Man so far. Like those movies seem like they were fun to be a part of because everything in it's goofy. Like, like it's very, well, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say you, it, it's just, it, it is very goofy because you know, the night before we get, um, shoot, home slice. Yeah, yeah. The night before um, we get no way home, we get from, um, Ned's kid. What's his, what's his character? What's his actor's name? I can't, I can't think of it. Top Remember of my head. you get Ned Zendaya and, and Peter, you get all of them saying phone home. Well, one of them saying phone home, home slice and home wrecker. And I've seen some ridiculous TikToks about these, um, you know, comparing them all with like Andrew Garfield slamming a door as home wrecker. And because uh, Toby Maguire's is very centered around pizza, pizza, pizza as well. <laughs> yeah. It's pizza, pizza time. time, pizza time, pizza time. It, that being home slice. Like that's, Maybe it does have something to do with it, but it's like people stretch it a lot. People stretch that. But going back to what I was saying, that's that is the goofy nature of you know that the Spider-Man style that we've seen so far. For sure. Yeah, it's cool. You have anything else about Spidey Man? You went in depth. Like I you I always learn 
I always learn shit when I talk to you about Spidey. I just love that they messed with Tom Holland. What do you mean? I don't know if it was. Like, I don't know him? if he was in on it or not. But like in the teaser, he, he comes out. He goes fake name again, and they're all giving him, giving him crap. Like you released the name. He's like, when have I ever spoiled anything? And Zendaya says, the, literally the last movie. Yeah, love that. Like that exactly. Like the type of. It shows that Tom Holland literally is Peter. Yeah, like to a T. Like I but love. But as he gets older, we're gonna get a much different Peter. I hope we do. Like, I, we need. We need. <sighs> Peter Parker, the MCU Peter Parker right now is not the Peter Parker that we need. If that makes sense. No, I, I get it. You think it'd be good character development? But like it's it's the same thing. Going back to our original point of this whole thing, comparing Ahsoka as a child to an adult, comparing Ezra and what yeah. we potentially want him to be, it's the same thing. Tom Holland's a little bit older and it's a little bit different case, but he's not quite there yet. He's only no, going to grow. Definitely not. Exactly. Um you know, it brings it back to what Tom Holland said. He said a couple of days ago that if they asked him to do 10 more Spider-Man movies, he'd be all in. And that's cool. You know, that's another Bo-Katan like character where he loves being Spider-Man. I bet I bet if I were him, I'd look in the mirror. I'd look in the mirror and say, you're I'm f- Spider-Man. You're fucking Spider-Man. You're Dude, Spider-Man. Like, if there's anyone that wasn't happy playing Spider-Man, yeah. who, are, who are you? <laughs> Don't play him. What like what are you be doing? Like come yeah. on, no. But like, the, Spider-Man is probably the most realistic superhero, you know, aside from like Black Widow or Hawkeye. But well, dude, that that's I I actually just got goosebumps because I went back to I actually saw a video today of Stanley talking about his favorite thing about Spider-Man was that because he was covered head to toe, any kid could imagine himself being in that suit. Yeah, and it also goes back again. That's goosebumps super cool. In the scene from Into the Spider Verse, when Mary Jane is at, is at the the service in Fisk Tower talking to anybody, or out on the steps yeah. when Miles puts the mask on, and he's like, "Anyone could be anyone could be Spider Man," and we're counting on you. Yeah, dude, you're giving me goosebumps over here, man. I miss Stanley. I love that movie. Yeah, <laughs> you just got to. I love that movie. I love that movie. Jeez. It's so good, dude. No, I know. I'm actually, I, know. Gonna watch, I might watch it tonight, to be honest. I'm sure you uh, will. We'll see. I'm we'll see. sure you will. All right. But, you know, we talked a lot of news tonight. It, it, do you have anything else be, before we let the people go? I'm good, man. All right. You're good. Guys, again, we, we appreciate you guys hopping on with us tonight. Um, this is going to be out. Today should be Wednesday by the time it's out. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. You know, if you agreed with, with anything we said, you know, we, we have so much fun doing this and, you know, even a few likes really helps, uh, grow the channel. Uh, we love talking and interacting with you guys. So, uh, follow us on social media. You can find me at every outlet at Funko stud and, uh, you know, Alec, I I like how I'm pointing at you and it's just completely covered by my mic, but I also think that I'm pointing the wrong way because I I have no idea. It's always flip flopped. All right. My, well, oh, well. Uh, where can the people find you? Hey, man. I'm Wall Crawler Pops on Twitter, Insta. And again, for like the 10th time tonight, newly founded TikTok. i um, excited about that one again, man. So Definitely. And you can follow the channel uh, everywhere at Carbonite Convos. You can find that on every social media platform and every major podcast platform. So again, guys, we appreciate you tuning into episode 28. But until next time, may the force be with you. Remember... The Force will be with you, always.